Welcome. In this video, we'll take a look at section 1.5, working with some more identities. We'll see how uh, the algebra of the trigonometric functions works. So the first example we're going to take a look at is we want to write the cosecant theta, cotangent theta, and cosine theta in terms of sine. So let's consider what identities we can use here to work with a sine function. So the cosecant function, to start out with, we know that this is defined as 1 over the sine of theta. So we can replace that first function by 1 over the sine of theta. The cotangent function, the identity for this in terms of sines and cosines, this would be the cosine of theta divided by the sine of theta or the reciprocal of the tangent function. And then finally, we have the cosine function. So when I take the product here, I can see that I'll have two cosines. So this will be cosine squared theta divided by sine squared theta. And to be able to represent this in terms of only sine, I need to somehow replace my cosine squared theta with something in terms of sine. We know that the Pythagorean theorem tells us one cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta as an identity. So we can rearrange this and say that the cosine squared theta is equal to 1 minus sine squared theta and replace that in our identity. So we have 1 minus sine squared theta divided by sine squared theta. So this is representing that product in only the sine function. And that would be the complete answer there. Let's take a look at the second function. We want to rewrite the tangent of theta minus the secant of theta in terms of sines and cosines. So let's start with the tangent function. The tangent function we know is the sine of theta divided by the cosine of theta minus the secant of theta is the reciprocal of the cosine function. And so if I add like terms here just to simplify, I can say that this is going to be the sine of theta minus 1 over cosine theta. This represents this function in both sines and cosines. So this would be a complete solution there. The next identity that we want to work with is just rewriting the secant function, secant x, in terms of sine. So the secant function, the first thing we can think of is its reciprocal, 1 over cosine x. Now, we have the job here of turning the cosine function into something in terms of sine. So to do this, let's develop the initial identity we were working with, which was the Pythagorean theorem. So we know that the cosine squared in this term is x plus sine squared x is equal to 1. So I would like to go out and solve for cosine in terms of sine. So let's do that. We have that cosine squared x is equal to 1 minus sine squared x. If I take the square root of both sides, I can get my cosine x isolated. And the final result here, we'll want to be careful, has cosine of x equal to, when I take a square root of any variable term, I know I need to have that plus and minus, or really any term at all, 
we'll have the plus and minus of the root of 1 minus sine squared x. This is one of our identities actually on our previous lesson that we can actually use to submit for the cosine x. So to rewrite this, we have the 1 over plus or minus the root of 1 minus sine squared x is equal to the secant function. So that's using some of our identities to simplify a secant in terms of just sine. And that would be complete. We can also do some multiplication with our trigonometric functions. We do this by the same way we would with any algebraic term. We can FOIL this product to start. So 2 times cosine, 4 times cosine would give us 8 cosine squared theta. And then we'll have 2 cosine theta minus 5 minus 10 cosine theta. And then we can take a look at a second product, 3 multiplied and distributed to each term on the right side. This would give us 3 and 4 is 12 cosine theta. And then 3 and 5 give me minus 15. We can also combine like terms here, 8 cosine squared theta, we'll have a plus 2 cosine theta and a minus 15. So this would be fully simplified with all its like terms. We'll take a look at one more algebraic problem with trig functions using a substitution technique. So we want to simplify the expression of the square root of 4y squared minus 36 as much as possible, substituting 3 secant x for y. So we have a substitution here for y. So that's where we're going to start um, substituting that into our square root. And then we'll see how much algebraic simplification we can do. So we'll have 4 on the outside. y squared is going to become 3 secant x quantity squared minus 36, all in the square root. We'll have the square root of 4. If I square that parenthesis, I'll have 9 secant squared x minus 36. If I continue uh, my progress here, I'll distribute the 4, and so we can get the square root of 36 secant squared x minus 36. Um, we can also see that there's going to be some like terms here with the 36 that I can factor inside this square root. So I have 36 times secant squared x minus 1. And we're getting pretty close to the solution. Well, notice that secant squared x minus 1, this is one of our Pythagorean theorem. identities. And this happens to be the tangent squared identity. So we can replace that secant squared x minus 1 with a tangent squared x. And then finally, last but not least, um, we will have to 
take the square root. The square root of 36 will give us 6. And then taking the square root of the tangent squared x will give us the tangent x. Um, one thing we'll have to attach here is an absolute value sign. We need to guarantee that our tangent of x is of the absolute value or a positive form here. So we're just going to take the absolute value for the solution for that square root. So our final solution here is just going to be 6 times the absolute value of tangent x. And that would be complete here. So thank you for watching this video. We'll take a look at some right triangle trigonometry in the next chapter.